Good morning, people of God. Welcome to worship. It's good to hear those sounds in the building again. Thank you so much for those gifts. A uh, couple of announcements as we begin worship. Good to be together both in person and online. Thanks for the gift of your presence. If you are worshiping online, please remember to make a comment, welcome, and greet your fellow worshipers on the Facebook page. Happy Independence Day. Happy July 4th to all of you. Uh, wherever you are and however you are celebrating, we hope you do it safely. Just a reminder, the church office will be closed tomorrow for the holiday. Today we are celebrating communion, and those of you here present should have your communion kit with you to participate during the appropriate time of the service. I invite you at home to get things ready wherever you are with some bread and some wine or juice to share later on. BBS, Vacation Bible School, it's almost here. The kids will meet once a week for five weeks on Wednesdays beginning July 14th. Registration is underway and details are in the First Glance newsletter and our weekly e-news on Thursdays. We have two collections that are ongoing right now to help people in the community. You are invited to drop off items at the church office entrance, entrance A. Those are pita, peanut butter and jam for making sandwiches among our Friday breakfast crew at Greensboro Urban Ministry, and hygiene products distributed through Faith Action International House in downtown. We are partners with them in assisting all kinds of refugees and immigrants who are new to Greensboro, getting them settled and acclimated. So if you can contribute, please do so. And again, those items are listed in the Thursday e-news each week. It is a joy to be together on this July 4th Independence Day. And I just want to call your attention to the bulletin cover for those of you who are here. A quote from Peter Marshall, Presbyterian theologian and pastor from the early 1900s who also served as chaplain to the U.S. Senate for a number of years. Peter Marshall said, May we think of freedom not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. We'll incorporate that a little bit more further as we get into our scripture readings for this morning. For now, let's begin worship with the brief order for confession and forgiveness printed in your bulletin. And on the screen, I ask you to please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Praise and thanks to God, creator, Lord, and companion, eternal source of forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Awaken us to the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may receive your forgiveness, confess our sin, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we humbly acknowledge before you and one another that we have turned from your ways and we have struggled with the power of sin by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We turn to you and wish to do better we trust in your compassion as you promise to forgive us. As we renew our promise to follow Christ as our Lord, uphold us by your spirit so we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. God is rich in mercy, loves us even when we give in to sin, and makes us alive in union with Christ. By grace we are made whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen us with the power of the Holy Spirit, so faithfulness to Christ may be our guide. Amen. Amen. Let us sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with freedom. Keep Keep us faithful faithful to the ways of your Son, that that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in our service, and I miss this so much, I miss asking all of the kids that are present to come forth, but I know that there are some kids watching at home. So this is the point in the service that is just for you. You tell your parents to get out of the way. It's time for you and Pastor Emily to have a chat. 
And today is so special. Today is a holiday, and it rarely happens on a Sunday. It's many, many years. It has to roll back around since the 4th of July. And so we are celebrating 4th of July today. And so I wonder, what are your favorite ways to celebrate the 4th of July? Some of you may be at the beach right now, or you have a family vacation planned. And so your favorite part of the 4th is spending time with your parents who have finally put down their devices and their computers and are giving you all of their attention. Or maybe your family has cookouts. I know I grew up always having a cookout on the 4th of July. And maybe you're looking forward to those hot dogs and hamburgers that are going to be served later this afternoon. Or maybe you like the fact that there are neighborhood um, parades and different things that you get to do and see everybody come out in their red, white, and blue. And if you were here, you would see we've got lots of red, white, and blue in this room today. People bring out their flags. They hang them on their houses, on their mailboxes, in their yards. It's wonderful to see the patriotism in this country. But I don't know about you. My favorite part of the 4th of July will come tonight, and it's the fireworks displays. And since it's on a weekend, some of us had fireworks last night. We'll have them again tonight, maybe even tomorrow night. And I know I love them, but my dogs sure don't. And I don't know if y'all have animals. They can kind of freak out with the fireworks. But the 4th of July is just a wonderful time to remember all the freedoms that we have in this country. And it makes me remember that not only as an American, but as a Christian, we are being called to guarantee those freedoms for other people around us, to be able to advocate for other people, to speak up and be there for people when their freedoms are in jeopardy. So I want you to talk to your families this week about ways that you can stand up and show up and speak up and help those around you that maybe don't have the same freedoms or they're being taken away and you can be there for them and help make sure we all have the luxury of these freedoms that we celebrate in America. So let's remember that as you are munching on that hot dog and watching the fireworks, that you can be a voice for other people. So let us pray before our service continues. Dear God, we thank you so much for the freedoms that we as Americans get to enjoy. But this is also a good time to remember that we can use our hands and our voices for those people whose freedoms aren't being given to them as easily as those around us. So use our voices for others, and we give thanks that you love us as much as you do. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, kids. I hope you have a great and safe 4th of July, and I look forward to seeing you in coming weeks. A reading from the sixth chapter of Exodus. God also spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they resided as aliens. I have also heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are holding as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say, therefore, to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will free you from the burdens of the Egyptians and deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. 
You shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has freed you from the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. Moses told this to the Israelites, but they would not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and their cruel slavery. Here ends the lesson. Reading from Galatians, the fifth chapter, and 1 Peter, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. For the very purpose of freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firmly, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called into freedom, sisters and brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. Instead, through love, become servants to one another. For the whole law of God is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. As faithful servants of God, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. The good news of God for all people. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I mentioned in last Thursday's Faith Lift in the E! News that we are often reminded on national holidays like July 4th, Independence Day, that freedom is a gift, but freedom is not free. We are reminded that freedom comes with a price. We are reminded as we remember countless lives throughout decades and centuries who have been dedicated to both procuring and defending freedom throughout the 245-year history of this nation, and others around the world have committed themselves to the cause of freedom as well. We are an indebted people who see ourselves and regard ourselves as free. Our Bible readings today remind us of another important aspect of freedom. Freedom comes with a price indeed, but it also comes with a warning. Listen again to the advice written in Galatians 5 we just read. For you are called into freedom, sisters and brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. And again in 1 Peter, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. You see, on both the personal and the collective level of life, freedom is not just the absence of slavery, nor is it only the absence of oppression. Freedom is a profound and priceless gift that, strangely enough, provides for us the ability to use it poorly and to make mistakes, even to the point of using freedom to cause harm and suffering for others. Freedom, freedom by its very nature, comes with the ability to choose poorly, unwisely. Two quick examples of that this past week has been filled with a lot of ups and downs for my family, 
as we finally got my parents moved into assisted living here in Greensboro after they had lived for 20 years in an independent living setting, senior community in Williamsburg, Virginia. They spent a few days at our house, arriving in Greensboro and our home on Sunday afternoon and through Wednesday morning when we finally moved them into their new community here. We had gotten the services of a caregiver to spend time with my parents and take care and help them a bit because both of them in their 90s had become very unsteady. Both of them have challenges with mobility and balance. While they were getting dressed on Tuesday morning, the caregiver was helping them. But they both went into the bathroom together and insisted that they could help one another and that everything would be fine. They insisted that they did not need the assistance of the caregiver. You know what's coming, don't you? Yes. Well, that didn't work out too well. Uh, the caregiver, at their insistence, stayed outside the door and listened and said, I'm here, do you need anything? I'm here, can I help? Listening and offering, but also granting them the freedom to decide for themselves and make their own decision about their need for assistance. She respected that, and they demanded it. They wanted a certain level of freedom on Tuesday morning getting ready. And sure enough, my dad lost his balance. And sure enough, my mom could not keep him steady. And they both fell onto the hard tile floor of the bathroom. As a result, my mother has multiple bruises on her arms and her legs. And my dad ended up in Wesley Long, where he received 20 stitches in his head. Sometimes we all make poor choices with our freedom, don't we? I know I have. And sometimes in exercising that freedom and those choices, we hurt ourselves or someone else in the process. The same kind of thing has happened in our society on a much broader level. As we have begun to enjoy freedom and seek freedom from the COVID pandemic protocols, of mask wearing and social distancing and things like that. We are experiencing this very chaotic journey, a very fallible human process of now reversing the safety measures that we put in place to ultimately keep one another healthy and to save lives. And we are doing so as individuals who live together in a community context in a larger experience that involves other people, not just ourselves. And you know this as well as I, but we could ask in this room or in this congregation's membership or across this city or county, and individuals would have a variety of opinions as to how we should undo what we have done in terms of those protocols. And it's not easy. And people are all over the spectrum of how quickly or how slowly we should do that, or how suddenly or how gradually we should do that, and what it should look like along the way. We each have our opinion, don't we? And it's not necessarily easy. In fact, I would say that coming out of this situation of protocols for the pandemic is even more turbulent than going into it at the beginning back in March of last year. And as we have benefited from these measures that we are fortunate to have put in place, that have saved countless lives and provided safety and good health to many of us, they have now become weapons we use against each other of sorts, used for judging one another, used for name calling and labeling each other, used for inflicting additional pain at a time when none of us needs any more of that. In the name of freedom, some people are choosing to use these safety measures as a means of spreading hate, or just mean behavior, or acting as if everyone ought to do this the way I say so, 
because I'm right and nobody else's opinion matters. But that's just not how our diverse human family works, is it? It simply doesn't work that way. If anything, now is a time when our society needs more patience, more tolerance, more understanding, and more forgiveness. More awareness of the diversity of our own perspectives and experience of how best to come out of what we moved into 16 months ago. As Christians, we can choose to exercise our freedom to fill the world with more grace as we choose to embody God's compassion. We have that freedom. On the worship bulletin cover, as I asked you to read at the beginning of the service, is that quote from Presbyterian pastor Peter Marshall, who not only served large church in Washington, D.C., but served as the chaplain to the U.S. Senate for several years. He famously said, may we think of freedom not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. And I would take that even a step further as we gather as people of God today, people of faith, followers of Jesus, I would say the calling of freedom to do the most loving thing we can possibly do. God trusts us to be stewards of freedom. And God calls us to be purveyors of liberation, setting people free, loosening bonds, and liberating people from whatever might hold them back or shackle them in this life. This is not just an inward gift for me, but this is given to us so that as we revel in our own freedom, we exercise freedom to oversee God's work and God's agenda that is much larger than any of our individual perspectives. That unbinding of the entire human family. That's God's dream. That's God's work. That's God's agenda. And that's why we gather in community to celebrate the freedom we have through Christ in God. Today we are encouraged and quite welcome to celebrate what we are set free from and celebrate it with gusto. But we are also people of faith and so our focus also includes considering what we are set free for. We are free to be the most loving, the most compassionate, the most justice-seeking, the most peacemaking, the most forgiving people the world has ever known. We are free to choose to infuse the world with God's grace, with God's love. Listen again to Galatians 5, just a portion of it. For you are called into freedom, sisters and brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. Instead, through love, become servants to one another. For the whole law of God is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Two more quick examples on the other side of that coin, if you will. Friday afternoon, I was finishing, finishing up here at the office after Helen Dasso's memorial service. Helen's family was leaving when a man and a woman that I did not recognize came to the door, the main entrance over here by the office. I thought to myself, there's someone asking for financial assistance, which happens quite frequently, to be honest. And I took a deep breath, and I went to greet them at the door. Come to find out, it was a woman and her adult son who had never been to our church before. They explained that her husband and the young, younger man's uh, father had recently died. They were looking for a place to donate his wheelchair and his shower chair 
and his walker and his portable toilet. All were in very good, very clean condition. They had asked a nurse at a care facility here in Guilford County where he had been living when he died. They asked the nurse there, whose name I did not recognize and is not in our membership roles, but they asked her, is there anything we can do with these things? Is there anywhere we can donate them where they can be put to good use? And the nurse said, I think First Lutheran Church has a medical equipment closet where they loan things to people in the community who need them. I read an article not long ago about how many tons of usable medical equipment th like these items ends up in landfills every year. But this family, in the midst of their grief, had the presence of mind to exercise their freedom to think about others who could make use of their loved one's equipment, even while they were settling things with the estate and the process of his death. Second quick example. We as a church have been in conversation with both regional and national church representatives in the ELCA and the North Carolina Synod about our recent water well campaign. I hope you realize and know that it was quite successful. Our collection has resulted in one of the largest totals ever undertaken by one congregation. We have collectively, as a community of faith, invested enough to build eight and a half wells, and we're pretty close to nine. And I'll tell you, the campaign has ended, but if anyone would like to contribute, you can. But think about this for a minute. There are so many things that you and I can do with our discretionary money. But this congregation has exercised our freedom to use it to provide clean water for communities who are desperate and thirsty. We have exercised this gift of freedom with our discretionary money and income as an opportunity to embody God's compassion and to set people free from suffering. Those people in those communities that will have clean water because of your and my and our generosity understand, will understand a sense of liberation because you have exercised your freedom. One last thought. American novelist and college professor Toni Morrison, who died just a few years ago, said that she used to tell her students in her college classes all the time, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your real job is to empower somebody else. Happy Fourth of July. May we use our freedom wisely. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us join our voices as one and profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It's the time when we normally receive our offering and we set our minds and hearts on both receiving God's gifts and God's generosity and then becoming a vessel of it and sharing it. So I, I invite you, encourage you to do something that I sort of alluded to in the, in the message and the sermon and, and Emily, Pastor Emily did in the children's message as well, as well. And that is take some time this week to make your list of the freedoms you enjoy, most of which we take for granted as an everyday common occurrence. Think about the history, the people, the ancestry behind those freedoms that you benefit from. And then I encourage you to also make an offering, another list of, a, of those who are bound by something that you can help with. And make a list of things you can help set people free from in your world, in your life, in your context, and share them both with God prayerfully. Let us take some time now to join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. We pray, O God, o God for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the wind of your spirit. God of liberty, God of life, God of resurrection, God of freedom. On this 4th of July weekend, we give thanks for the ability to live in a nation founded on the principle of freedom. Thanks so much for this precious gift. May we never take it for granted. And may we remember that we receive this gift, not only by your grace, but through the work and dedication and faithful efforts of so many decades and centuries of ancestors who have gone before us. Lord, may we celebrate freedom for ourselves and for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are so very aware, more than ever, that no one is truly free until everyone is truly free. We know as we begin to see life from other people's perspectives around the globe, but also in this nation, that freedom is not fully accessible to everyone in the ways that it is for some of us. And so we pray, O oh God, for this nation and its ongoing grand experiment with freedom. May it truly be experienced by all of the citizens of this nation, fairly and equally. May we find ways to listen to each other, hear each other's story, understand the limits and barriers to freedom for those who still have them and work together for ways we can make sure freedom is shared fairly and equally for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the freedom to worship, the freedom to pray, the freedom to give our lives to you and in so doing live our lives for you. One of the ways we do that is by praying for one another. And so we take a moment now to share those 
thoughts, hopes, and wishes for those who have asked for our prayers. We thank you for Helen Dasso and her 102 years of life on earth as we pray for her family, that they find comfort in their loss and that they trust your promises of life and love that never ends. We lift up to you others who have asked for our prayers, including Grace and John, Janice and Wanda, Charlene, Julia, Gary, and Ray. We pray for David and Margaret, Patty, Cass, Dixie, and Sam. We pray for Myla, Ellen, Michael, Ron, and Emily. We pray for Sam and Howard, Rachel and Christine. Gracious God, there are probably other people on our hearts and minds as we gather this day. So we take a moment now to lift, the, lift them before you by speaking their names either silently or out loud. Use us, O oh God, to be your comfort, your healing, your grace, and your presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, during this time of summer, we, many of us, enjoy a time of leisure and rest, a time of travel and vacation. We pray for safe journeys as well as warm homecomings. We pray for times of rest and renewal. We pray for times of reconnection with you, with each other, with family and friends, and with your good creation. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of this earth. As we receive those gifts, may we be grateful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. I invite those of you at home to prepare for communion. Get your bread and juice or wine ready as we share the holy meal together now. The Lord is with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He shared it with all of them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection as the foundation of our lives. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remove your masks and receive the elements of communion, the bread and wine, and listen to these words of promise. Body of Christ given for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you, given in love. Amen. stand as you are able. May the risen presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and the life-giving love of Almighty God our Creator strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the gift of your presence. Happy holiday to you. Happy July 4th. Now go with Christ and go as Christ to love and serve God's world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.